Everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. We're about three hours from State College, one hour from Ithaca, southern tier of New York State, near Binghamton, looking at a 2010 Acura MDX. It's got 120,000 miles on it, and the owner has a table of parts. <laughs> he, he pleaded and pleaded for me to come. I finally yes. made it a month later. So Raheem, yes. <laughs> Tell me, tell me what's on the table here. Okay, here I got every used part in the book. I got mobilizer, emission switch. I have two ECUs. Uh, what's the customer complaint? What's what's the problem with the car? Flash no start, crank flash no start. The, the, For a month the, and a half, it's been sitting. the green key, right? The green green key flash flashes. Light. Crank, yes. no start. No start, and okay. it's been that way for a month and a half sitting. Uh huh. And how much have you spent on this uh, problem so far with I different say, shops? I say close to all together with parts and everything, close to close to almost five, a little over four thousand. Holy cow! Over yes. four thousand yes. dollars. Whew! This is the last resort. So the yes. pressure's on. Uh, right now, the car has all original parts except for one part that was a used OEM ignition switch, yes. right? Yes. So just this part that piggy piggybacks off the yes. the whole lock. Yes. So this is a, you know this is the immobilizer unit right here with the little ring around the key. So these are all eBay 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 parts. eBay. Okay. Yes. And then what are these things here? Um, they came with this as a set. Uh, okay. So I'm not too certain. So eBay, eBay, eBay. Yes. Uh, and these were tried, and then the original was installed because it didn't fix the problem, right? Exactly. exactly. Okay, great. I like original parts, so we're starting from scratch. Wonderful. Uh, first thing we need to recreate the problem. So let's go to the car. Let's go to the scanner. See if there's anything stored in the codes menu. So first, I scanned the whole car for codes. There was nothing of interest there's like two TPMS codes so and, and the car is starting perfectly fine so let's go to immobilizer and in here if we go to OEM data the sun glare is going to be ridiculous today but Immobilizer system troubleshooting immobilizer indicator blinks. So it tells you to go to immobilizer, immobilizer setup, and then check, do a system check and status log. So once we get into the immobilizer, immobilizer info and status log, turn the ignition switch off, okay, turn the ignition switch on. Okay. So we have status log A1, A2, A3. These are kind of like trouble codes in the immobilizer. And this is the number of times that the fault occurred. So we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. D2, 20 times. Right there. That's a huge clue to our problems. We need to look up D2 in this status log or... Um, you know, troubleshooting tree. So right here in the status log, we'll go to A1, A2, A3, that's not us, B1, B2, D1, and D3. There's no D2. I'm like, why is there no D2 code when it's stored 20 times in the scanner. Now if we do system check, initially, I already started in the diagnosis, initially it was fine. Normal, you know, no problems. So when you turn the ignition key to here, you see it just briefly blinks and the car starts. Now, system check, N1 normal. Okay. I went online and searched for D2, you know, 2010 Acura MDX quote code D2 in the immobilizer. Found something interesting on diag.net. Immobilizer issue and repair steps. So I basically just Googled 
immobilizer status log D2 and this seemed to be pretty uh, pretty interesting so 15 D2 events and 1 D3 event communication losses on SNET circuit to MICU D2 and PCM is D3 that right there is a key piece of information he attempted starting, providing both keys 50 attempts while moving the steering column controls up and down to duplicate. Inmate concern. Issue occurred once and went away instantly. Okay. So, this steering column goes up and down, in and out. And I asked the owner, please put the steering wheel in your favorite position. Because that's when the problem is occurring. If there are any wires that, you know, flex or bend, I want them to be in this position when the problem is usually occurring. He did that, and then the green key started flashing, and I'll show you what came up on the scanner when I did the system check. Try to block the sun here. It says, immobilizer system is not normal. System check code D2, no communication between IMOES unit and immobilizer unit. Possible failure, blown fuse, harness open. Communication was not good. Da, 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 da. Battery voltage low. So out of all these, if it's a very intermittent problem, it's not gonna be a blown fuse. It's probably not an immobilizer unit failure. And the steering wheel position is key, so I think this harness open is going to be our problem. Let's try it again. So we can move the steering column a little bit. It happened once for me. <laughs> so um, we need to pull up a wiring diagram and investigate what could cause this D2, loss of communication. This car has such a long history. The first time it was down for about a month, and the first or second guy, whoever looked at it, took apart the steering column, fiddled with some stuff, and it actually started up. So that's a key that the problem is gonna be somewhere in the steering column, and it's gonna be a very intermittent problem. So we have to be careful not to move too much you know, of the harness and see what what's going on all right got the steering column off or the uh, the plastic stuff here's our immobilizer unit right here so there's two plugs I believe this one is the immobilizer we can check with the wiring color so OEM diagram pin one is a white wire that's a power hot at all times Pin two is a brown that goes to our fuse 19, hot and on or start. That's the ignition power. So is that right? Pin one, it's white. Pin two is brown. Pin three and four are, I guess, light green. And yes, they're both light green. So there's a B can, that's wire number, pin number four, and this S net, number three, that also connects to the PCM and the MICU. This is the mobilizer, you know, whatever, smart fuse box unit. So two communication lines, and then Ignition, key, switch, light, key, interlock, solenoid, okay. That's pin six, that's a pink wire. Yep, that's pink, pin six. Pin five is the orange K line, that matches up. And finally, pin seven is a brown, that goes to the PCM. I guess another communication line, probably. LG3, not sure what that is. Let's put a scope on pins three and four and then move the steering column around see when this signal occurs and if it's interrupted when the steering column is moved 
Now, I see one potentially suspicious spot here. See that bolt and the harness, when the steering column moves in and out, the harness is kind of riding right on, on that bolt and it looks like it's chafing and rubbing through. So this automated stuff, every time you get out, the steering column goes, you know, up and down over 120,000 miles or 10 years. I bet that the problem is going to be close to here. It looks very suspicious. Some of the insulation is starting to kind of get damaged there, but I want to get a scope on both of those wires and see if it's indeed pulled to ground intermittently when we move the column or, or what's going on. All right, so here's the two channels. Channel one is on the S net, channel two is on that B can. I'm gonna turn the key on. Okay, we get some kind of activity. The green light is not flashing. Oh, the green key is flashing. <laughs> okay. Oh man, that's super cool. So if we do system check, it's going to say There he goes, D2 exactly the same code. Harness open from MPCS to the MICU. So this is our waveform right now let's go back to the crank it actually looks like a decent waveform so maybe it's not shorting to ground it's definitely not talking let me save this waveform and we'll do some more checks okay so now the blue line the S net is at five volts before it was zero to 12. Let me cycle the key. So the key is still blinking. So I'm gonna turn the key off. Nothing happened. Green key stays blinking. This thing's at five volts. And now we're zero to five. Let's do another system check. and one system normal. How about that? That blows my mind. Let's uh, save this one as well. Save all your data. That's absolutely key for, especially for intermittent problems that are acting really weird. All right, so now we're still at, the SNET is at five volts which was not the case before, before zero to 12. Let's see what happens. It passed the test. Car starts normally, no problems. And it keeps talking on the S-Net. Key off, key on, key off, key on. I'm just gonna leave the key on for a while. This is crazy that it switched voltages? I've never seen anything like that. Okay, so when the car did not start, we had this crap. Zero to 11 volts. I don't think that is correct. And it wasn't even, was it zero? I don't think it was even zero. 1.3 to 10.9. Okay, right now we're going from zero to five, which is reasonable. You think that's a good communication signal. So whenever we see this thing go from one to 12, 
that's going to be that's going to be the problem. So is it going to be a module problem that the transceiver no longer goes from 0 to 12, it goes from like 1 to, or 0 to 5, it goes from 1 to whatever, 11. That is completely insane. And so right now everything's good. And we're going to have to wait for this thing to fail again. I'll, I'll run it for a little while. Very interesting. By the way, note in the status log, each time this problem happens, this D2 counts up. So that's indeed our problem. And the scope showed that whenever the waveform was 1 to 12 or 1 to 11 volts, there was still a waveform, but the computer, you know, the mobilizer was basically like, I don't know what's going on. So who's responsible? Basically, when that happens, what I want to do is pull, I just unplug it from the mobilizer. If it drops to zero to five, then the fault's in the mobilizer. If it stays elevated from one to 11, then we're going towards either the PCM or the smart you know, fuse box. Pretty insane. Well, now of course, when I want it to act up, it's refusing to act up. I'm just curious what will happen if I pull this uh, connector out. So it stays at 5 volts. Very interesting. And do we set... I'm pretty sure it'll be a no-com. Is there a green key flashing? No. <laughs> There, it's flashing. Okay, yep, no comm. Plug it in. Zero to five volts. Still flashing. Let's, uh, let's do a status log. Turn the ignition switch off. Okay, turn the ignition switch on. It worked fine. Let's see if it's set an error log for there we go, status log B1 was set. Oh, I guess I erased the memory when I unplugged it. Interesting. So I guess we know that the power stays there. I wonder what B1 means. So this signal, is it coming from the mobilizer? Turn the key off, it's at 5 volts, and if I unplug it, it's at 5 volts, I turn the key on, so the mobilizer is pulling down that signal, if it, if it gets elevated, it's still pulling down the signal. I Basically, I want it to act up, pull the connector. If it drops to 5 and stays there, we're calling this a mobilizer unit. If something else happens, then it could be the PCM or the, you know, the smart fuse box, the MICU. I need, I need this thing to act up one more time so we can do that experiment. Or we can just put on a new immobilizer, make sure it works, program it with the Think Tool Pros, let the customer drive it. If it fixes it, then great. But this, this is a module problem. It's not a wiring problem because if there was two wires shorted, it would either pull the whole line down to ground constantly or pull it all the way up to battery voltage. This is something weird. It's just the bias voltages get strange and the whole thing goes nuts. It still talks on the other line. It's just this S. 
Okay, so I plugged it in. Now it's good again. It's gonna be fine. So I'm gonna maybe leave the key on, let it talk, and then just hopefully it acts up. So I call up the guru, the legend, Keith DeFazio. I'm like, Keith, got this car, very intermittent problem. Give him the symptoms, the code, and the elevated uh, signal, the elevated uh, SCAN, whatever, uh, immobilizer to MICU signal. So there still pulses when the signal is elevated. He's like, oh man, I remember this Honda that had the exact same symptoms and I like kicked the left kick panel and the, the signal did the same thing. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> so if you look at the diagram, right, it's ridiculous. The only intermediate connector here between the mobilizer and MICU is this 601 pin 16 photo 66. Honda's really good about photos. C601 20 white connector right here behind the left kick panel. Here it is, there's the connector. So, if we look at the pinouts, 601, pin 16 is gonna be on the left side, it is a light green wire, so you can't quite it's going to be on the left row here. One, two, three, fourth wire down. Okay. And you can kind of see a little, maybe a little green crusties there. Maybe some things. But we can't touch anything until we look at our scope. So I'm just going to tap that connector while looking at the scope. What? No way. That's the fault. I bet the car. The green key will flash right now. That is exactly what's going on. If we tap it again, I mean, it, it won't start, guaranteed. Right? If we go to our system check. There it is, the D2, okay, key off, see that elevated voltage? It's not quite battery voltage. If I tap it again, there it is, okay. So we gotta cycle a key, cycle a key, it'll stuff fire right up. Again, can we, can we reproduce it? I don't know, I might have fixed it, might have tapped it a little too hard, but the problem's right there. Keith, I owe you one, man. That was freaking phenomenal. Would we have gotten there on our own? Eventually, maybe if it acted up and I unplugged the mobilizer and the voltage stayed elevated, then we were like, we need to go towards the MICU. But that's insane. So a little voltage is bleeding from one of these pins to pin 16. Let's see, so pin 16 is our mobilizer system communication line. What's, what's around there? Maybe pin six, orange gauges and indicators, pin 15 or 17, backup lights, DPMS, probably not, five or seven, navigation, fuse 12, okay. Seven green power door locks, keyless entry security system. So perhaps five to 16. 
that's it. This is the proof. So I'll save these captures right here. So this is when I tapped it. So 27, 28, 29, and 30. Those are the money shots. Unbelievable. No parts required. We're gonna take that connector apart, clean it out. This will be guaranteed fix. Absolutely no parts required. Thank you. Sir. All right. So the owner's very excited about <laughs> about the uh, the news here. There's gonna be no parts required, and. I'm a, I asked him, Did you, have you ever noticed any water, any dampness in this area? He said yes. Sometimes he notices a little drip coming from, from that corner of the windshield, right Raheem? <clears throat> so, I don't think it's a sunroof drain, but let's, let's just unplug this connector, see what it looks like. Because we're never going to recreate this problem again once we unplug it. Oh yeah. There it is. There's the green and the crusty, boom. So pin 16 would be right there. One, two, three, four down. One, two, three, so, oh man, the corrosion almost reached it. I mean, it did. Let's see, one, two, three, yep, number four. <laughs> so you can see that the positive pin, the constant hot, is where the corrosion originates and it just starts going through all the pins. Insane. Deoxid time. We're gonna scrub that out, clean this up, and make sure that the signal is good. All right, here we go with the cleaning. So first, deoxid on both. Then I have these uh, contact cleaner kind of like files. So I wanna maybe even detach this connector from from the car, get in there with you know a little brush without disturbing the pins too much, and just get all the green out from in between the pins. It does work pretty well. We'll get this all cleaned up, put it back together, and this car will be good for a while. So there is one problem with this connector: the pin that was where the corrosion is originating, hot at all times. So the second one in the upper row, it's extremely, it's basically gonna break off. And you can see how easily, easy it is to bend. Now which pin is that? That pin is, That's 601, pin 9, and that is fuse 2 under dash. It says brown. What is fuse 2 under dash? If we look at fuses, fuse 2 is power lumbar, 10 amp, number 2. So if you look at the seat diagram, there it is. Fuse 2 power lumbar support, driver's lumbar switch. So this is not a key function. So I'm thinking just removing fuse 10 for now or fuse 2 down here and so this will never happen again and that pin is broken anyway so I guess he might have to lose his lumbar support unless you want to cut the wire you know rewire it separately and but I just want to eliminate that from this connector to, uh, to have a reliable starting car I think starting is much more important than lumbar support all right, so the owner approved my suggestion of just pulling the lumbar support fuse so this pin 9 is now not hot anymore and it won't build the green crusties through this whole connector, even if it gets a little wet. But he is going to fix the sunroof, whatever, uh, windshield leak, and that's it. So next shot, I'll have everything put together. We'll have the scope rolling, and we'll see the nice, good waveforms. Okay, connector is plugged in. So the owner has three keys, they all should work. Yep, beautiful, no green flashing key. Fires right up. Tap that connector all day long. 
nothing should happen. It's all clean and nice and it doesn't have that constant power to build the future green crusties anymore. So I think we'll wrap it up. Thanks a lot for watching. Check out the waveforms uh, and the link in the description below. Uh, I always try to post the PicoScope waveforms so you guys can follow along. And that's it. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.